Hello you guys, welcome back to Black History with Patricia and today we are going to be reading and learning about Alvin Ailey and we're going to be reading the book Mr. and Lady Day. Thank you so much for having patience with me over the past couple of months has it been since I last uploaded. I've been really busy with school and my job and I haven't really had the chance to get in front of the camera for you guys. So thank you for having patience with me and let's get into the video. This is post-production Patricia cutting in. So the rest of the audio and the video kind of got corrupted. So I'm going to have to improvise for the rest of the video. I'm going to be using audio and photos in order to tell the rest of the video. So I'm going to be reading the book and having pictures of the pages for you guys to read along with. And I'm going to have pictures of Alan Ailey flashing across the screen as I talk about him. Thank you for the patience. This was very last minute. And now we are going to continue to reading Mr. and Lady Day by Amy Noveski, illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. Billie Holiday loved to sing. As a girl, she sang along to all her favorite songs on a borrowed gramophone. She dreamed of being a star. And a star she became, the great Lady Day. But sometimes stars don't feel like shining. They need someone to listen, and that's what friends are for. Lady Day's dogs were her best friends of all. There were a lot of dogs in Lady Day's life. The poodle she carried around in her coat pocket, and the brown and white beagle. The chihuahuas, Chiquita, and Pepe she fed with a baby bottle. There was a great Dane named Gypsy and a wired-haired terrier, Bessie May Mucho, who wagged her tail like a metronome. Roger Raboy, the sad mud she gave the grandest name, would wander off, but he always found his way home. And then there was a boxer named Mister. Mister and Lady Day were rarely apart. She knit him sweaters and cloaked him in a mink coat. She cooked for him and took him on midnight walks. She sang to him, Sugar, I call my baby my sugar. Mister was Lady's favorite. Someday she'd have a house in the country filled with dogs. Life would be good. Mister would be there. He always was. When Lady performed at glamorous Harlem clubs, Mister sat beside her before the show. Porters brought him plates of thick steak and bowls of water. Later, he stayed with Lady Day in her dressing room while she pinned flowers in her hair. He kept fans at a polite distance. When it was time for her to sing, Mr. would lead a nervous lady to the stage and wait for her in the wings. Lady was famous for singing the blues, but the sadness of her songs didn't matter to Mr. As long as he could hear her, he was happy. Then, just when her career was at the top, Lady got into trouble. She had to leave home for a year and a day and Mr. couldn't come. Lady knew what it was like to be left and it made her heart sick. She promised Mr. she'd be home soon. But when she looked into his sad eyes, she wasn't sure she'd ever see him again. While Lady was gone, she wrote letters and knit sweaters, but she did not sing. Singing was about feeling and she didn't feel a thing. When it was finally time to return, she wondered if Mr. would be there. Would he remember her at all? Then there he was, running down the platform. Mr. leaped on Lady, knocking her down. Someone screamed and everyone scattered. But soon a crowd gathered. It's Billie Holiday. And Lady's homecoming was as bright as a paparazzi's flash bulb. Lady couldn't go home just yet. On the front porch at a friend's farm, she rehearsed. It was time for her to sing again, whether she felt like it or not. In just 10 days, she would have her biggest show ever at New York City's Carnegie Hall. Lady was afraid. She'd heard the rumor that the great Billie Holiday was through. Was it true? On the night of the big show, the concert hall glowed. At midnight, the house lights dimmed and a spotlight as full as the moon appeared. Slowly, Lady walked to center stage. The hall so quiet you could hear her heels click. Lady trembled. Where was Mr.? Was he waiting in the wings? As the band's notes began, Lady lifted her chin 
and when the great Billie Holiday sang, everyone in a dog held their breath and listened. And I'm thinking, if you were mine, I'd never let you go. The end. When Alvin Ailey was a little kid, his father walked out on the family and it left his mom to become a single mother. They lived a pretty nomadic lifestyle between all the different jobs that she had and it left Alvin to be kind of alone. He turned to different outlets for his feelings and he chose dance and music. He was offered a scholarship for the University of California for the dance school. After college, he started at Horton Dance Company and he was very involved and appreciated the company until it closed as the result of the company's founder, Horton. His work at Horton's dance company led him to many small roles after he moved to New York. He also worked with 92nd Street Young Men's and Young Women's Hebrew Association. He officially made his first work, which was called Blue Suite, and afterwards he started making his own works and his third official work for the 92nd Street Young Men's and Young Women's Hebrew Association would be called Revelations. This work would ultimately turn him into one of the most influential choreographers of his time. The Alvin Ailey Dance Theater came from the success that resulted from the 92nd Street Young Men's and Women's Hebrew Association. The dance company started off with only eight black dancers, however it grew substantially. It grew to include the dance studios and repertory along with the full company and dance theater and would go to dance all around the world. He featured many black artists in his works and he would make it a point to support SCLC and speak out against apartheid in South Africa. He would live on until 1985 when he would pass away and even though his, he passed away, his legacy in his dance and dance culture would live on and influence the way dance is now. Thank you so much guys for sticking with me through the rest of this video. I hope you guys learned something new about Alvin Ailey or enjoyed the book that I read for you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this format because I really think I'm going to use this for the rest of my videos. I really like how much more smooth it is compared to when I record in front of the camera. That saying, I will still get in front of the camera every once in a while, but I really like this format better. Please leave your feedback in the comments. I would love to hear whether or not you guys like this better than me being traditionally in front of the camera. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks so much. Leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys next week.